Hey guys, it's Laney and welcome back to my shop. Now, we're going to get started on our next project and with Christmas all around us, um, I'm always getting requests for different projects and lo and behold, the other day on my Facebook page, I had a message from my mother. My mom asked me if I spoke to Santa anytime soon, if I could put in a good word about getting her an art easel this year. She continued on to say that she wanted something that she could be comfortable while she's painting or drawing and not be standing for long periods of time. Well, even though Santa and I are like that, I decided this is something that I could do. Uh, and it's a great project that you could build for the artist in your family. We're going to build a desktop easel. So follow along, stick with me, and we'll get right into it. All right, guys. Uh, talking about or getting into uh, the desktop easel. Now, I said in my last videos in the Hickory Chess Build that I wouldn't be talking as much. But actually, this project would be a nice little project to make for a family member or friend who likes to draw or paint um, it'll be a, it'll be a nice little piece so I figured maybe I would give a little bit of detail as far as measurements and stuff that uh, to where if you wanted to build one um, you could simply just go off of uh, the video so let's talk a little bit about uh, the box itself um, I chose my media uh, or wood material is going to be walnut and oak uh, will be the two it'll give a nice contrast uh, the walnut and oak will give a nice little contrast not as much contrast as if you use like a walnut and maple or, or something but uh, it'll, it'll give a decent contrast um, for the different parts of this box uh, walnut will be the main side of the box and the oak will be the top and bottom panels of the box as well as the internal moving parts and some of the there's going to be two trays inside this box uh, the trays will hold uh, the different paints and brushes and everything. There's going to be two trays. The reason being is uh, I'm going to have a tray for the acrylic or water paints and then a tray for the oil paints uh, and brushes and different things. So we'll get into the trays later in uh, the video. Let's talk about the frame a little bit more. Normally when I'm building a box, uh, I'll build it as a whole unit. I'll cut the four sides, cut the top and bottom panels, I'll glue everything together and then I'll take it over to the table saw once everything is set up and I'll cut the lid separate from the bottom of the box. Um, and that's normally how I make my boxes. But I've got some groove cuts and some notches that I have to make in these individual frame pieces uh, for some of the moving parts and stuff. So building the box as a whole and then cutting the lid separate just wasn't an option on this particular build. So what I did is I went ahead and I made two separate frames. And I have the bottom frame and the top frame. Now in the top frame of the box and the top panel, the oak panel, we're going to use a half inch thick oak. And I went ahead and milled uh, an oak board down to a half inch thick. I left it a little long and a little wide so I can cut it down to its final dimensions later. Um, and the bottom panel for the box is going to be a quarter inch thick and I milled a, a board down to a quarter inch thick and like I said uh, later we'll cut it down to its final length and width dimensions uh, once we get into uh, these parts a little bit more. What I did on the top frame is I went ahead and cut the rabbit on all four pieces where the top panel will uh, sit into. Now the rabbit on these pieces are um, they're a half inch deep, three eighths inches thick. Um, the uh, three eighths inches thick will um, give me a nice you know three eighths inch border here because you know once I get the box glued up and everything I may decide to round over you know, the top and, and bottom of the box. I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it square or round it over, and that's something I'll get into. So I wanted a little bit of meat left over. So three-eighths inches thick, half-inch deep, so it'll accept that panel. And um, I'll use one of my smaller pieces here, but when that panel sits down into that rabbit, you want a nice, flush uh, fit. All right, now what we need to do, while I have the router set up with a... Uh, half inch spiral bit that I used to uh, cut this rabbit in the top frame it's already set up for that three inches uh, deep 
Now all I have to do is I can maneuver my fence to cut the quarter inch rabbit in the bottom pieces. So why don't we go over to the router and uh, get that rabbit cut in and let me see if you can see this pencil mark here I marked on the board. I need to go ahead and cut that rabbit on all four pieces all the way down for the bottom panel. So let's move over to the router, get those cut, and uh, then we'll start working on making some of the notches for the internal parts and I'll explain to you what they are and uh, why they need to be there. All right. All right, guys, over here at the router table, uh, we've already, we've still got the setup from the routing the top frame. The bit is still set at three inches high, and we're going to keep it there. Now all we have to do is just adjust the fence to get our quarter inch depth. Um, one side of the fence is locked down. The other side is loose, so I can move it and increments or you know we're in the position where I want it um, what I what I do uh, normally is is I go ahead and set my bit up or my uh, fence up for the deepest cut which is the final cut and when I have it set in place <clears throat> I go ahead and mark on my table where my fence has got to come back to when I move it. Um, now that may not be an option for you. Uh, you could put a piece of tape down or something, or you know, if, if uh, whatever way that you can do it to set your fence or adjust your fence because you're going to be moving it, uh, you know, while you're making these cuts. So with it set at this position, I can now bring it in. So I'm just making a shallow cut. I'm going to make a couple of shallow uh, passes until I get that full quarter inch depth. Uh, with it in position, I can go ahead and lock down this side and uh, get ready to pass my pieces through. Now, you can either use blue tape or uh, just simply mark on here, which is going to be the top of the box and which is going to be the bottom. That way you know um, what end you're cutting. I went ahead and I just marked a little T at the top here and a little B at the bottom uh, so I know my bottom piece or my bottom part of my frame is going to be up against the fence making that bottom rabbit. So let's get uh, the router plugged in, get our protection hearing and eye protection on and we'll make this cut. Okay, so what we did there is we made our first little shallow pass. Now, we need to go ahead and make the next one. So, let's get the fence set up.
All right, so now that we've got that groove in three inches deep, quarter inch down, we're ready to go ahead and go back to the other frame parts and uh, start making some notch cuts for our different moving parts. All right, guys, uh, once I got off the router table, I came back over here to the assembly table and I went ahead and set up the two frames uh, on top of each other like, you know, the box is uh, going to be when it's assembled. And uh, I determined what I wanted to be the front and back, left and right of the box. Now, the side facing me is going to be the front of my box. Uh, so what I need to do in this top front piece, <clears throat> I need to go ahead and I penciled it in so you can see it a little bit better, is I need to cut out this notch here. And what that will allow for is, of course, my top panel. And then on the inside of the box, my extension arm, which is going to be resting in the box when the box is closed, but then it extends out as the box when the box is open uh, to support the canvas. Um, it's a support arm for the canvas. And uh, in order for it to be able to slide in and out of the box, I need to go ahead and cut out this notch. Now I'm going to do this on the table saw. Um, it, I can use my table saw sled and it'll give me a little bit more uh, support as I'm notching this on. I need to go ahead and set my blade height. So I'm simply just going to uh, set the piece here and then raise my blade. Once the blade height is set, I can go ahead and start cutting. Now that I got the notch cut, I can go ahead and take a chisel and clean up some of these little uh, burrs that uh, the blade saw blade left. Now with that notch cut out, uh, what it will do is it will allow this arm that sits in the box to slide in and out. Okay guys, once I have uh, the notch cut out of this uh, top frame piece, I'm ready to go ahead and glue the top frame together. That's all the cuts that need to be done in the top frame. Um, simply what I did was I took all four frame pieces and I laid them end to end and I put some blue tape where the two ends uh, of each piece come together. What that will allow me to do is when I do the glue up it will allow me to keep everything in line and it will also help for glue squeeze out uh, when I put my clamps on it. So now all I have to do is lay this out 
and uh, I'm ready to add the glue. I've got everything sitting here ready for the glue up. I've got my clamp uh, glue, so that way, you know, once I get the glue on it, I can just throw it right into the clamp and uh, move on to the next part. Doesn't need a lot of clamping pressure. Um, you don't want to kill it or warp the frame. Once you get it in the clamps, go ahead and just take a little damp cloth and clean up some of the squeeze out. You don't have to get it all. You can get it uh, here in a few minutes when it sets up a little bit. But you can get some of it. All right, while that's setting up, we'll go ahead and set it aside and get ready to start working on the lower frame. All right, guys, uh, the top frame of the easel box is all glued up and ready for its panel to be glued in. But before I do that, I need to cut a three-quarter inch dado across the front a quarter inch deep. I'll explain why later in the video. Um, but I'm going to do that over here at the table saw. I've got a three quarter inch dado stack uh, already set up in the table saw. And um, if you don't have a dado stack, then you can still make it on the table saw by making single passes until you get your three quarter inch width. Or you can make this cut on a router or your router table. Uh, I'm going to make it on the table saw. I have a dado set. So might as well use it now I've got a sample piece um, already cut out of the same stock same thickness I'm gonna pass my sample piece on over first before I pass the panel check my width and my fit and my depth before I cut into my panel it's always good to have a couple of scrap pieces laying around uh, out of the same material you're working with.
the first thing I want to do is check my fit. And a nice friction fit is what I want on this. Um, so that's a nice fit. And then I am going to check my depth. Once I'm happy with all that, then very nice. And let's see. you won't be able to see that. What am I doing? The lighting is terrible. Quarter inch thick. Okay. So now, I can go ahead and uh, pass my panel through. All right, there it is. Now I'm going to take this panel over to the router table. And inside of this dado, I'm going to cut through the panel. Same three quarter inch width, but I'm not going to make a full cut. It's going to be a stop cut, probably about uh, four or five inches wide. All right, guys, I went ahead and glued the top panel into the upper frame. And in that quarter inch deep, three quarter inch wide dado, I have a walnut strip. Now, decorative, little, but there's actually a reason for it. When the box is in its open position and the artist is drawing, need a place to set the canvas so it doesn't just slide right off and where it'll sit is on that platform so the platform will be in its out position the canvas will have a place to sit and basically what I did was I glued a couple of pieces of walnut into that dado and I left a little bit of the bottom of the dado showing and I made a platform with a little bit of overhang on each end. So that way, when it sits in, it'll sit in nice and flush. Now, in order to keep this from just coming right out, when it's installed, it's final installation, I'll glue another piece on the other side that'll act as a stop to keep it from coming all the way out of the top panel. Now to keep it in locked in the out position, what I'm going to do is on each side of this slot here, I'm going to install two small screws. And they will act as a metal catch for the two rare earth magnets I have in each end of this strip here. So that way when this piece slides out these magnets will catch onto those screws and hold it in the out position. 
the rest of the frame or the rest of the lid, if you remember, I cut a notch out of this frame here. And what that is for is for this support arm. Now this support arm is an inch and a half wide and it's got a half inch slot all the way down the center of it. On the end, I glued a piece of walnut. See that? And what that is for is when this is in its resting position, it covers that opening. So as this slides up to hold the canvas, you know, depending on what size canvas they are, uh, depending on what size canvas it is, um, it'll be locked in place. And originally, I was going to install a threaded insert here to use with this curling nut, curled nut, uh, to lock it into place so they can hand turn it in whatever position it needs to be. But a shopping error when I went to the hardware store for all these parts, I overlooked a pretty significant thing, but it gave me an opportunity to be a little creative. And here, here's what the error was. My threaded inserts, the internal threads of the threaded insert are 1024. The threads on my curling nut are 1023. Well, 1023 don't go into 1024. So, I needed to figure out a way to stop this arm and lock it into place. And what I came up with was, and let's rest that there, was this little block here. And this little block has a notch grooved into it. Uh, that fits around there and it's going to be glued into position over those two guide blocks two oak guide blocks I have installed there to guide this and keep it straight um, And that'll be glued into position there now <clears throat> What I did was is I took a little nut and a brass washer and I glued them together and I used uh, Titebond Instabond. Uh, this stuff is part of the Titebond's uh, CA glue family. It's got a five second set time. It takes, you know, about seven seconds so you can maneuver your part and get into position. But then, you know, uh, after about that seven seconds, about a five second set time and then 30 seconds is a permanent bond. It's not just for wood. Uh, I use it a lot around my shop, but uh, it's, it's good for ceramics, plastics, uh, metal, all kinds of things. And that's what I use to glue that nut to that washer and when I on this piece here I've got a hole drilled through the center and then a three-quarter inch uh, flat hole real shallow see if you can see that um, is a recess and same thing on this side but on this side, I went ahead and glued with the with the Insta Bond uh, that nut and washer assembly already in there. Now, the nut and washer assembly for this side doesn't get glued in because it needs to be able to move freely to to press against this support arm to lock it in. And uh, to, as far as a chance to be creative, what I did was. I wanted a way, or I needed a way, to stop the uh, curled nut bolt to, so it doesn't just thread all the way through this nut and washer and just keep going. I needed a way to stop it. So what I did was, I went and found a 1945D wheat pin. It's worth about 20 cents in its current condition. But uh, 1945 is the birth year of the person getting this box. So with it assembled, I went ahead and glued this wheat penny 
to a nut and washer assembly and that will allow for that curl nut to stop and as it tightens down it'll push that penny into the support arm and lock it down into place so as I said when I glue it in position once I lock this down it'll lock that arm into whatever position and uh, the penny is a nice little touch it um, you know it's like I said it's the birth year of the person who's getting this box and uh, you know it's a 1945D it's worth more than a penny it's worth about 20 cents in its current state but let's stop for a minute and I want to talk to you about about shop safety on this part here um, and with small parts I always use a push pad um, to run the small parts through my router especially when I'm working with a big bit like a half inch uh, spiral bit which cut out this groove um, things can happen if you're not paying total attention to what you're doing uh, when you're cutting this and I'll show you an example this first piece here as it was going through it got hooked onto that spiral bit and it turned into a torpedo and if you can see that it just ate it up you can see where that bit got and just shot it right across the uh, shop and even though I had that push pad holding pressure on it it still went and that's how much force is behind those machines um, and luckily I was using a push pad because if I was using for such a small piece an inch and a half wide if I was using my hands uh, to go through there there's a good chance that that could have caught on and just not paying attention that my hands could have went with it and right into the bit so I always use a push pad and and and, and uh, for small pieces and uh, you gotta focus when you're when you're working on the machines absolutely focus on what you're doing at that time don't let anything distract you because one little distraction could cause a world of hurt so lesson learned um, on that piece second piece turned out perfectly and uh, I just wanted to give an opportunity to show that things do happen accidents happen uh, just like that without even uh, knowing it and uh, it can happen to anyone so just uh, be mindful you know to be focused on what you're doing uh, if at all possible if the parts are too small use a push pad or some type of uh, support to keep your hands away from those blades and bits and uh, just stay alert so with that being said I'm gonna go ahead and get the arm the little locking pad and the platform all in place and then I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the box get ready for the hardware to be installed and then we can start working on the lower trays now I'm gonna temporarily uh, install the hardware so I can see the placement of everything because on the lid supports that are going on the inside of the box I need to know where they're going to be positioned so I when I build my internal boxes uh, that everything has nice clearance once uh, everything is fitted properly then I'll take the hardware off and then of course do the final finish of the box so we'll continue this in a moment I'm gonna get this box cleaned up get all these parts put together and uh, then we'll get to work on the internal boxes all right guys that ends part one of how to build a desktop easel uh, in part two we will continue with building the internal trays which hold all the paint and brushes and different things um, as well as the final cleanup and finish of the box uh, it's going to be a two-part series and uh, I hope you're enjoying it and uh, following along um, 
be sure to check out my website at www.simpledesignofocala.com or find me at Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash the simple design of Ocala. Talk to you soon.